Hey everybody, this is Blake here, and yes, I look like crap. I'm wearing this nasty-ass t-shirt I haven't shaved in like three or four days. And it's really early in the morning, so I feel like crap too. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to be reviewing Iron Man 3. Now, I was really looking forward to this one. The trailers made it seem like it was going to be the coolest movie of all time. I loved Iron Man. I think actually the first Iron Man is one of the best comic book... Uh, movie adaptations of all time. Um, the only real rivals are The Avengers and The Dark Knight, and I'd probably go ahead and put it over The Avengers, just because The Avengers, for the most part, was a little bit more gimmicky. Uh, you know, the fun in that film was just seeing all these other iconic uh, comic book characters interact. Uh, but I actually may even say that I prefer Iron Man over The Dark Knight. Uh, it's just an, a movie that works on every level. Uh, then Iron Man 2 I thought was a worthy follow-up, but I wouldn't say it was great. It wasn't anywhere near as good as the first one. But uh, I had a lot of hopes that this would be, you know, at least better than the second one, if not as good as the first. My biggest fucking mistake is presuming that. I was so disappointed in this. I actually was kind of angry after I watched it. And it's weird because I don't think this is a bad movie at all. Actually, I'd say it's at least comparable to Iron Man 2. It just, uh, the trailers really misadvertised this. Um, I don't know, I guess my expectations were too high. Maybe um, Iron Man 1 was just too good to where it set the bar unreasonably high because none of the Marvel follow-ups, with the exception of maybe the Avengers, have even come close to matching it. But, um, so in this review, I'm going to warn you, I'm going to sound very negative. That doesn't mean that I disliked this movie, it's just that currently I am very hung up on the things I did not like. Uh, so, actually, you know, if you read my written review, I, it's not one of my better works. I, I really struggled when it came to articulating what I felt, but now I uh, actually can sum up my feelings in a single sentence. I liked every scene of this movie. I just did not like the overarching narrative that connected every scene. Um... Where do I even begin? Well, let me start off with the obvious things. The special effects are amazing. The action scenes are very good. It's incredibly well paced. You know, one thing with the action is, um, I'd actually say that this has the best final boss battle. Uh, the first one had a, a decent final fight. Um, it wasn't exceptional, but that was okay. It didn't have to be because the rest of the movie was exceptional. Um, but then the second one, I thought the final battle was a bit of a letdown. It was just too anticlimactic. I actually preferred the earlier battle where he t took on uh, Mickey Rourke's character on the racetrack. Um, but this one just had a very well put together final fight. There's a lot of tactics in the battle. Uh, you know, that's very well choreographed. The special effects don't let you down, and it's there's a lot of diversity too. Uh, I, I'm glad because I thought the problem with the first one was it was just like watching Iron Man taking on a bigger version of Iron Man, and unfortunately the second one wasn't too much better in that regard. But this one, it is at least different uh, when it came to the final battle. Uh, it's very funny. Um, for those who thought that the trailers made it seem too grim or bleak, it really isn't. It's no more than the other films, anyway. There's a lot of comedy. There's a lot of great one-liners, a lot of great reactions. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., as always, is hilarious as Tony Stark. But when it does go into some darker territory, you know, it never betrays the tone either. And honestly, you know, for all of my problems... This is enough. Um, great special effects, great action, good comedy. Those are the most important things I look for in an Iron Man movie. And the problem is that it just kind of fucks up everything else. Well, let me clarify. None of these pro problems I'm about to state are objectively bad. At least most of them aren't. They're just... It's not what I wanted out of this. And what what I wanted based on the trailers was you'd have Tony Stark, a great hero, taking on a great villain, um, the Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley. All of their interactions, even though you're not seeing any um, in the trailers, just were breathtaking. I loved the Mandarin's dialogue. And I thought, you know, this would be just like The Dark Knight where, you know, the narrative is really just focused on the rivalry between, you know, the hero, Batman, and the villain, the Joker. And I thought that's in itself can provide so much tension and make the story so much, ex so, uh, so very exciting. Unfortunately, we don't get that. Contrary to what the trailers uh, suggest, 
the Mandarin isn't specifically targeting Tony Stark. Um, what is pretty much going on is the Mandarin is just doing typical terrorist stuff, and uh, his main target is the U.S. government. Um, at first, Tony is kind of interested in getting involved, but you know he has his own personal problems to go through, and Rhodes kind of blows him off. But uh, but otherwise, it's just between the Mandarin and the government. Well, soon. Um, a friend happy played by John Favreau. I can't pronounce his last name. Um, he gets kind of caught up in a blast and even though he survives, he's very much injured. So that's when Tony Stark decides to get into the fray. And, uh, you know, he announces that he's going to kick the shit out of, uh, Mandarin, um, in an interview. And he even gives his home address. Well, this turns out to be a mistake because the Mandarin just sends in a bunch of helicopters, blows up Tony's house. <laughs> and then, uh, Tony barely escapes with his life, but the Iron Man suit is wrecked, so he has to kind of solve this mystery, uh, which isn't much of a mystery, <laughs> um, while not being able to rely on the Iron Man armor, while uh, the Mandarin sends various thugs after him. I don't like the fact that Tony Stark is really treated as a side thought to the Mandarin. You know, he's practically swatted like a fly, and then the Mandarin just focuses primarily on the government while he sends, you know, the occasional thug after Tony. To me, that just, I don't know, it just didn't make for a very sturdy narrative. I don't like the fact that it seems like Tony is on the outside of this conflict looking in. Um, the government's portrayed as completely incompetent, even though Rhodes is shown to be pretty badass. In terms of intelligence, I didn't really buy how a lot of this went down. For example, and this is the one objective complaint, I don't really see how you could send in helicopters to blow up this dude's home and not have anybody catch on. Is it really that easily easy to send in armed you know, missile-wielding helicopters to go blow up some place. Not just any person's place. It's frickin' Iron Man. Uh, and the government wouldn't be able to catch on. You'd never even hear them respond about any of this. So I thought that was kind of weak. And um, then the Mandarin, you know, even him, he doesn't strike you as particularly that intelligent. Um, you know, one of the problems with the Dark Knight for a lot of people was the Joker seemed too intelligent, that he just predicted too much, too perfectly. Here, the only reason the Mandarin seems to be getting ahead is because the government is stupid and Tony is kind of distracted. You know, his personal problems are kind of clouding his judgment. Otherwise, if this took place during the previous films, you don't even feel that this guy would probably be even a threat. Um, I don't like it when questionable writing um, is how intelligence is conveyed, if that make, made any sense. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was a big problem. Um, there is a huge twist that is very notorious that I'm making a point to avoid spoiling. Uh, unfortunately, I can't talk about a lot of what I disliked without spoiling, but what can you do? Um, I, I could see a lot of people being pissed off by it, especially co diehard comic book fans. Since I am not one of those, I don't really care as much. Let me say that the twist in itself was fine. Um, in fact, I thought the payoff was pretty funny. <laughs> but um, it, it's, once again, not what I wanted. Uh, to me, it just really... In fact, the story started going into places that I disagreed with. That does not mean that it goes into, you know, it starts becoming bad. It's just I never agreed with where it started to go. And um, just kind of a, a side thought involving the narrative. Um, when Tony Stark, you know, finds himself stranded without the Iron Man arm, well, he has it, but it's not working, he befriends this kid, and they spend a lot of screen time together. This bothered me for a few reasons. For one, it seemed like the majority of Tony Stark's character arc was dedicated to his insecurity that he's not going to be able to protect uh, Pepper Potts. So really, the movie should have been about them two together. Um, instead, she's not really in it that much outside of the first and third act. So a lot of the second act is dedicated between Tony and this kid. Now the good side is the kid is pretty funny. He's not annoying and even when he is annoying the filmmakers know this and are using it in a way so at least it's amusing and their banter is admittedly really well done but I just thought this kid was totally unnecessary. Uh, you know this is possibly the last Iron Man movie and you're going to spend the majority of the screen time you know about focusing on Tony and this kid who he just met. You know it's difficult to build I don't know, melodrama out of that because we don't know who this kid is. We're supposed to care only because he's a kid. I wanted to see more of Tony interacting with, you know, 
Rhodes, I think he deserved more screen time, or Pepper Potts, or I'd even take Happy, and I don't even like Happy in these movies. Um, so, but just having this kid suddenly show up and be important, I just thought wasn't cool. Uh, his character arc was also kind of flimsy. Um, you know, he after the events of the Avengers, and I do like how they do tie in the Avengers, and they're not fillery about it. One of my main problems with Iron Man 2 is they kept uh, alluding to the Avengers with the inclusion of uh, Scarlett Johansson's character in S.H.I.E.L.D. And, you know, when it came to just the standalone story, I didn't think it worked. It just kind of felt like padding. Uh, but here, whenever they mention the Avengers, it is pretty clever. And uh, uh, But what I didn't like was how Tony Stark is apparently, you know, traumatized over his near-death experience. Um... My problem with this is he's gone through plenty of near-death experiences. Why is this any different? I mean, Iron Man was practically born from a near-death experience. Um, is it just because, you know, he's, it's not f so much for him as much as he's afraid for Pepper Potts that, you know, things have gotten so crazy with the re revelation that aliens do exist and they may return? And I just, he realizes that, you know, his ability to protect her and everyone else is very limited. I just didn't feel that was clarified enough. Um, one thing I appreciated more about Iron Man 2 is that, you know, you felt you understood why Tony Stark was acting the way he was. You know, his arc was much more pronounced and clear-cut without being dumbed down. Here, it's like, they had some interesting ideas, like the whole, you know, is Tony Stark Iron Man or is Iron Man Tony Stark? Uh, that, that kind of stuff was interesting, but they just didn't execute it well, I thought. Uh, you ultimately care just because Tony Stark was in the previous two movies and you like him enough, so yeah, you do care for his problems. I just felt that, in general, the arc was just not very strongly defined. Um, anything else I could say? You know, it's, it's, like I said, it's difficult to talk about this without... Um, spoiling anything. The Mandarin isn't as strong of a presence as he is in the trailers. In fact, half of the dialogue he says in the trailers doesn't even appear in the movie, or it was mixed differently, so it's not, you know, as pronounced. Uh, like, for example, he says, uh, some think of me as a terrorist, I like to think of myself as a teacher. Uh, but it's, in a, it's just a part of a bigger speech. He doesn't Put as much emphasis, so it's not as cool. Or even scenes like, and if I missed this, I apologize, but I didn't get the Mr. Stark, welcome to the last day of what's left of your life. That's not in it. Um, You'll never see me coming is in the trailer, at least. Uh, but then I, I didn't hear the lesson number one. Heroes, there's no such thing. Or the, do you want an empty life or a meaningful death? I didn't hear any of that in the frickin' movie, and that pissed me off. Um, like I said, the Mandarin is a very minor part of the story in so many ways. Uh, and he's just not as threatening as the trailers make him out to be. Uh, anything... One thing I do respect about both this Iron and Iron Man 2 is that they're always about the hero, the hero Tony Stark. Um, a lot of movies, including The Dark Knight, they become kind of hung up on the villains. You know, like after the hero is established, they sort of fade out, and it just becomes focused more on the antagonist because usually they're more interesting by this point. But nah, these films resisted that cliche and were always about Tony Stark, and I do respect that. Uh, but yeah, as a whole, I think my expectations were just way too high, and I, I was beginning to get irritated with myself because I kept disagreeing with where the movie was going, but I have to admit that the only reason that was the case is that the trailers totally misadvertised this, and it just left me feeling like a douchebag because I was nitpicking so much about it when really the film does succeed in the most important areas. But, uh, so yeah, as a... Uh, conclusion to the trilogy, I thought The Dark Knight Rises was a much better finale, even though that film was also incredibly flawed. But this one, I just was like, oh, please let there be an Iron Man 4. I do not want it to go out on this note. Uh, but who knows? Um, so would I recommend it? Sure. If you liked Iron Man 2, I do think it's comparable to that. If you didn't like either of the Iron Man films, don't bother with this. Um, if you liked Iron Man 1 but hated Iron Man 2, it's up to you. I actually prefer Iron Man 2 a little bit more to this, just because I felt Iron Man 2... While it screwed up when it came to the villains, I hated how Mickey Rourke is such a spectacular villain. In fact, I'd say he's probably the best villain in the trilogy. Um, but even though he shows up in the beginning and then later on at the end, he's not much of a presence 
in between. <laughs> Instead, you get, what, focused on Sam Rockwell's Justin Hammer character, the guy who we're not supposed to take seriously. Not very threatening. I thought that was really stupid, but apparently, originally, Mickey Rourke was going to have more screen time, but they cut it out for some reason. Um, but yeah, while Iron Man 2 was flawed, I did think that it pulled off more of its ideas better than this one did, um, but not by much. We're talking a hair. In fact, I was torn as to whether I should give this two and a half or three stars, I decided to give it two and a half just because I wanted to make a point that I thought Iron Man 2 was better. But it should be noted that a lot of people really did like this. Um, uh, I think a lot of it just comes down to how you're going to react to the twists and where the story goes. Uh, you know, if I if I, the hype really didn't affect me, I probably would have loved some of the twists. But um, unfortunately, I, it did so I can't bring myself to approve but it's not like I said the story goes into any bad directions it's just directions I disagreed with so for that matter you might agree with where the story goes and you might like a lot of the twists I saw it with my dad and he loved where the film goes just because he you know he didn't watch a lot of the trailers and he didn't know anything about Iron Man so it just even though he saw the previous two films, he was just kind of going in with a clean slate. So maybe you'll react the same way. It's up to you. If you'd like to read my written review, and I'd appreciate it, even if it's not my better, uh, one of my better reviews, uh, the link will be provided in my description. Uh, be sure to check out my website. I've done written reviews of, shit, what have I done recently? <laughs> Stagnite, um, Shaolin. Check those out too. Um, and uh, that's really all I've got. Follow me on Twitter. Hopefully a Critiquing the Critics episode will come out either next week or the week after, but we'll have to see. I'll see you guys later.